Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars and constellations. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video, we'll discuss the winter solstice of 2020, as well as address the planetary conjunction that is also happening today that, in fact, has been happening for the past couple weeks. If you got a chance to go onto Google today, which is pretty much a daily occurrence for me, you probably got to see this cool animation of Saturn high-fiving Jupiter, and then you see Earth down here in a little winter snow hat. And it's so awesome because it signifies this great planetary conjunction that hasn't happened for over 800 years, but it also acknowledges the fact that the Earth is going through the winter solstice. So what is the winter solstice? It's derived from the term sun and to stand still. And that's because the sun's de declination appears to stand still. Humans have been recording the path of the sun, moon, planets, and stars for as long as we can remember. And it's important that we recorded this in order to time agricultural activities. And the word solstice is really just an another term to record an astronomical event. And there are two solstices that happen throughout the year. There's one in the winter, and then there's one in the summer. The opposites of those would really be the equinoxes, and that's when there is equal daylight, um, two points during the year, one time in March and then the other in September. But for the winter solstice, that's when we have the shortest day of the year. Remember, the earliest humans spent more time outside than we do, so they really used the sky as a clock and a calendar, and they were able to tell and record that the sun's path um, changed throughout the sky throughout the year. And what you notice right here, this is a record of the winter solstice, and it typically happens around December 21st to the 22nd. For 2020, when this video is recording, it is happening on December 21st. So what we start to see is that we have the shortest amount of daylight in the year, and from this point on, the days start to get longer. So it's always a good thing, I feel, when we hit winter solstice because that is the telling that spring will eventually be here and that even though it's cold, eventually it will warm up. Every day there will be a little bit more of daylight. It also signifies for me that the winter constellations are coming and I absolutely love the winter sky. There's just so much to see, so many brilliant constellations in the northern hemisphere as well as really cool celestial objects to find. But this year is really, really special because it marks the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. And as I'm reading about this in the media, what I'm hearing a lot of is it's being called the Christmas star, which really is a misconception because this isn't a Christmas star, they're planets. Um, and sometimes I think the media will sensationalize and create these special names just to bring more attention to these astronomical events, which I guess I can be okay with at some point. But this is the closest that Saturn and Jupiter will be in uh, within like 0.1 degrees of each other in the sky. And that is really, really amazing. The next time that we will see something like this will be not for another 80 or so years. So it's really, really amazing that we are getting to see this. Sorry, not 80 years, but in another 60 years. Um, in 2080 is the next time there will be a conjunction like this. So um, the last time we saw something this, like this was in 1623. So how can you find it? What you really want to do is look to the southwest horizon. And depending upon your place on the planet and your latitude, that will depend on how high Saturn and Jupiter are, are off the horizon. So throughout... Throughout the past few days, you can, if you were observing this and going out, like kind of right after sunset, you can see that Saturn would be over here, Jupiter was over here, and they're starting to get closer and closer. So it really is this amazing astronomical event. 
for me, unfortunately, I haven't seen much of it simply because there have just been way too many clouds in the sky for me to see this event. But luckily, I've seen both Jupiter and Saturn through a telescope, even though I don't own one. I've seen it in the past. Um, it would be absolutely amazing to see it together in a telescope if you have that opportunity to do so. So if you need a little bit of help with how to find the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, I want to bring your attention to this website. This is a website I use called inthesky.org that you can plug in your specific location and then it will show you what the your sky looks like for your latitude and longitude. What I also love is that it gives a rundown or an overview of all the different events that are happening within the sky and it also tells you level one level two how difficult how difficult it is to see it also goes over all the constellations that are outside during this particular time frame so for me i usually click on the planetarium and as you can see it's loading and you can see this is where saturn and jupiter is well you can't see jupiter here but if we were to zoom in it would be here so i love that you can change this, you can move it, and to me this is really a, a super simple tool to use, especially if you're a beginner stargazer. And here, here we go, here we're zooming in and you can see that Jupiter and Saturn are really, really close to each other. So I encourage you to use this tool to help you just explore the sky a little bit more. There's all kinds of things you can change down here and customize. I particularly like to use the search feature. Um, I go to object search and if I want to find something, um, I type it in, maybe even check some boxes here, search it, and then um, it shows me where that particular object will be. So I encourage you, check this out. It's a, I find this tool a little bit more a little bit easier to use than Stellarium. I think Stellarium is a great tool to use, particularly if you use a telescope while you observe. But this one is just a little bit simpler, and I love that you can adjust it to your own location. So I wish you luck trying to find uh, the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. It's pretty easy to spot in the sky. I just wish you clear skies. If there's any, if there's going to be any boundary that you come across, it will be that one. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, for those of you that watch regularly, I will have one more video post for tomorrow, and then I'll be taking a little bit of time off until the new year. Um, I've got some new courses that are being released this coming uh, new year. I've got a winter sky course, so I hope you guys would be interested in checking that out. I also have some freebies that you can download as well on my website. So thanks so much for watching. Be sure to find that Jupiter-Saturn conjunction and keep looking up. Remember, it takes time, patience, and practice to identify the stars and constellations and the planets as well. Good luck and take care. Stay safe.